designing a real time operating system rtos so before that we need to go through uh, the basics of operating system now what is operating system operating system is nothing but it like acts like a interface or it can act like a bridge between your application or task and the underlying system resources right so you have some applications or some programs and softwares or some application or task you have and in order to control that task or in order to execute that task you require some hardware or some resources so the interface between these two okay it acts the operating system acts like a bridge between this application as well as the resources okay through a set of uh, system functionalities and services that system functionality and services what we call it is nothing but an operating system right so basically operating system manages system resources and makes them available to the user application or task on a need basis say as i told you there may be different applications at a particular instant of time maybe more than two applications which will run in a system right maybe say for example n number of applications now those applications uh, require some resources right different resources will be there say for example some sensors are there or some actuators are there those applications may require those resources so that resources should be allotted or say it requires some memory in the system so that memory should be allotted so all this allo um, allocating the memory or allocating the resources in general or uh, allocating for a particular time interval or maintain or checking creating a task uh, and also like uh, allocating the gpu for the um, uh, execution so all this process uh, all this all this uh, task will be taken care will be managed by the operating system so basic function the primary function of an operating system is to make the system convenient to use and organize and manage this is important organize and manage the system resources efficiently and correct correctly okay so if you go through uh, the architecture of the operating system given here you can observe here the on the top you have user applications right user application and at the bottom you have underlying hardware okay for these applications in order to execute these applications the hardware or what we call the resources are required applications at a particular instant there may be many number of applications which well or which or which requires the hardware so this hardware or the resources should be shared equally for all the applications so in order to do that operating system what you can observe in between this os comes to picture okay so we call it as a kernel service okay so this services include like memory management unit it includes process management it includes time management it includes file system management and it includes input output system management okay so these are the basic functions memory uh, management accessing the memory or giving a portion of the memory to the particular applications okay and also process management creating a process and communication between the processes or in order to execute that process some resources may require allocating that resources scheduling that resources all that and time management time management may be something applications may be need to be executed within the stipulated time or um, they should be like <clears throat> at every instant of time the resources may be allotted for different applications <coughs> time management comes to it <coughs> next is file management system okay and input output um, input output devices will be there that has to be allotted for the application so all these functions or all these uh, services will be given by the operating system or in general we call it as kernel services okay so basically this is the idea why operating system is required coming to the kernel kernel is nothing but the core of the operating system it is responsible for managing the system resources and the communication among the hardware and other system resources it is the one which controls or which manages the resources which allocates the resources to the particular application okay so basically it acts as the abstraction layer between the system resource and the user application okay so these are the different function as we already seen like um, it is used it pro the kernel provides different processes different services like process management primary memory management 
file system management, input output system, or we call it as device or resource management, secondary storage management, production, time management, and interrupt handling. So all these uh, services will be provided by the kernel, which is required for the execution of the application. Okay, so if you consider an operating system, basically uh, there will be two spaces, what we call it as kernel space or OR, that is nothing but OS operating system space and the user space. Okay, so what is this? Uh, what is the basic difference between this? The program code or what we call it as code memory or the program whatever you have stored or the code whichever you have stored in the memory. So program code corresponding to the kernel application or services are kept separate in the contiguous area or what we call the primary memory and it is protected from the unauthorized access by user program or application. So if you consider uh, your desktop system, basically on this desktop system you can have what uh, two levels or two spaces. One is uh, the program which is related to the operating system, okay, the uh, application program which is totally related to the OS, what we call it as kernel uh, programs and the programs which, is, uh, which depends on the uh, depends uh, on the application that is say user application programs okay now these kernel programs which may include like the program uh, in order to allocate the resource program in order to schedule the resource or program in order to allocate the um, memory management in the previous slide we have seen different services provided by the kernel right protection or uh, to the file or say here uh, secondary storage management, file system management, everything, every, all these services are nothing but uh, an application, right? It is, we can call it as, it is nothing but a set of instructions or a set of program which will be executed or as and when it is needed. So, all these are nothing but the instruction itself. It has to be stored somewhere and it has to be protected. You need to make sure that uh, no other users right or general purpose user or any other user who can access that particular OS based program and can we can access that program and we can manipulate we need to make sure it is totally protected so all the operating system based programs or the instructions will be placed in the primary memory what we call it as a kernel space and it will be totally protected from the unauthorized access by the user program or the application the memory space at which this kernel code is located is known as kernel space and all the other user applications are loaded into the specific area of the program memory and this memory is referred as user space so basically this users uh, in the user space we can easily get the data from the user space or modify the data in the user space there is uh, um, uh, no much production to this but whereas operating the kernel space it is totally protected okay it's os based programs it has to be protected and then uh, uh, unauthorized access only the system admin or the admin is admin of that particular system can get into that code and manipulate if anything is required okay so partitioning of the memory into kernel and user space is purely operating system dependent okay so coming to the types of operating system uh, depending on the type of the kernel and the kernel service okay as well as the purpose and the type of computing system all uh, operating systems uh, have been classified okay and the uh, responsiveness of the application and the operating systems are classified into two types first one the general purpose operating system general purpose operating systems are the one which we use in our uh, say desktop system or the laptop systems right say for example uh, windows X, uh, xp or the windows server windows 10 whatever we are using now or the dos ls dos are nothing but general purpose operating system so these are deployed in the general computing system okay the kernel is more generalized and contains all the required services to execute the generic applications right so many applications like uh, uh, say word document or playing a movie or uh, fetching some file and storing sending it somewhere or the browser it is nothing but for general applications so uh, the kernel is uh, more generalized and contains all the required services to execute the general applications. Need not be deterministic in execution behavior. A deterministic in the things like say uh, we can uh, we are setting a deadline. When you open a word document, a uh, word document should be open within say five seconds or within ten seconds. It is not required. There is no deadline for that, right? It is not deterministic. The execution time or the execution period it is not deterministic. 
right it can be uh, executed within the time interval or it can go uh, beyond that uh, because it is used for the general purpose so even though the failure okay, of the system like failure of an application doesn't affect the system so it is not uh, deterministic in execution behavior it may inject a random delays in the application software and the cause flow or responsiveness of an application and unexpected times at an unexpected time right for example in our system itself if we open two or more than five applications obviously this um, system will slow down right the time required to respond for that particular application uh, will be delayed right so that is okay in general purpose operating system and usually it is deployed in computing systems where deterministic behavior is not at all an important criteria right say for example the word document for me or the, the video player or uh, anything such application where uh, time doesn't matter you know, that is execution time doesn't matter right even though if you close suppose if it enters the hanging state uh, you will open an application the application is not responding okay it enters the hanging state what you can do is you can directly close it or you can go to uh, uh, what is that panel control panel and there you can close it forcefully you can close it application can be closed uh, in any time right even though it doesn't produce the required output uh, you can close it not a problem again you can reopen it or restart that particular application uh, such applications where uh, time doesn't matter or uh, execution time may not be deterministic such applications can fall under this general purpose operating system so general that is personal computer or the desktop system is a typical example for a system where GPUs are deployed. Windows XP and MS DOS are the examples of this general purpose operating system. And whereas uh, uh, the second type of operating system, it is nothing but RTOS, a real time operating system. Here, as the name itself indicates, as we have already studied what is real time system. Real time system is the one which has to which has to execute its application within the given time interval. Okay, each application for each application there will be a deadline. Okay, within the deadline, the execution should be completed. Okay, so in such type of applications where or uh, the deterministic behavior plays a very important role or the time plays a very important role, in such type of application, these real-time operating systems will be used. So operating system which are deployed in the embedded system with demanding real-time response. Okay, that is deterministic in execution behavior consumes only known amount of time for the kernel applications okay it implements scheduling policies for executing the highest priority task or application always so different scheduling policies are there, are there. okay uh, we will go through the scheduling policies later basically the scheduling policies falls under two categories one is non preemptive scheduling and the preemptive scheduling non preemptive scheduling in the sense uh, once the uh, scheduling occurs it will not be pre it will not come out of that Okay, the preemptive scheduling, uh, maybe at a particular delay or based on the interrupts, there may be a, sw a switching of the scheduling from one task to the other task. We will go through it uh, in detail in next uh, uh, classes. Uh, next is uh, impl implements uh, Artos implements policies and rules concerning the time critical allocations of our system resources. Uh, various examples like Windows C. QNX or VXWorks or Micro OC, all these are the examples of real time operating system or what we call it as RTOS. So, coming to the real time, now we will go through only the real time operating system. Coming to the real time kernel, the real time kernel or the kernel of the real time operating system is refer referred as real time kernel. In the in complement to the conventional operating system here, the real time kernel is highly specialized and it contains only the minimal set of services required for running the user application task. Remember this if you consider a general purpose operating system, there in general OS, the kernel of the general OS, it consists the generic services, general almost all the general services which is required for the applications or for a particular system, it is available over here. But whereas here in the embedded system, in this particular type of uh, uh, kernel and that is real time kernel you will have very specific services available for in order to run the application 
because all the applications may not be required as you know that embedded system is meant for a particular application designed for a particular application based on the application we can have the different services available in the kernel so the basic functions of the real time kernel are first one is task or process management okay task or process management include creation of the task once the task is created how exactly it has to communicate from one task to the other task okay all that will be included next is task or process scheduling okay uh, once the task has been created it has to be executed or once the process has been created it has to be executed right how the scheduling what are the different scheduling strategies available different policy scheduling policies available and that falls under this particular section next task or process synchronization okay and after scheduling they should be synchronized like say for example i have three tasks in queue okay task one task two task three and one scheduling strategy will follow now suppose say that the output of task one should be given to the um, task two if in order to run task two i need to receive some inputs from task one so there should be a synchronization between task one as well as task two how this synchronization is done all that will be taken by the kernel services next is error and exception handling exceptions i'll say that is nothing but when during the execution of the, of the particular application if any error occurs or if any applications or uh, doesn't run so how it will be handled or if any high priority task occurs during running of a particular task so what we need to do so that will be again taken care by this kernel you know, kernel services next is memory management as you know that embedded system of the memory available for a particular embedded system is very limited so how exactly we are going to manage which are the different strategies involved in allocating the ma memory to the different tasks that is nothing but memory management next is interrupt handling handling of different interrupts or high priority of interrupts uh, uh, that also will be taken care and the time management okay the execution time required to execute a particular task if the uh, uh, execution doesn't meet within the deadline what is the next step to be taken that is nothing but time management system okay so all this will be going to study under this under the next coming topics so these are the various services provided by the operating system that is real time operating system so we will be uh, studying in detail each uh, topic one by one